And this morning, because we're doing a, a morning show, my time, I'm your only podcast because it's 6 a.m. here. So um, so we can't uh, always uh, ask Jim and Hunter to take time off work just to join us. Uh, but joining us, we do have a guest because uh, it's not just going to be me talking to myself uh, this morning. Uh, joining us all the way from Essen, Germany, which is why we're doing uh, this time zone thing. Chris H., uh, the developer, I'm not going to butcher your last name, Chris. Uh, Chris H., the developer of the uh, Space RTS building game Galactan Years. Welcome. Uh, thanks, Brian. Hi, guys. What's up? <laughs> and uh, I think they can hear you okay, guys. Uh, I'm trying a new audio thing this morning, so uh, if, you, if you can't hear Chris or me, please let me know in the chat, and I will... I will fiddle with things, but good morning. So, Chris, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you. Folks, you don't know, but Chris has been very flexible. I had to cancel a couple weeks ago because we had a house guest. Uh, let me, oh yeah, we can only apparently really hear me. I'm going to try and turn you up, Chris. But I had a house guest, and I didn't really know I was having a house guest, and the house guest was staying where the computer is. So I couldn't ask my girlfriend's mom, hey, could you get up and get out <laughs> so I could do this thing? Uh, I, could, I couldn't freaking do that. <laughs> yeah, it's no problem. I'm glad to be here right now so we can talk about the game and hopefully have some fun. S uh, sorry. So, uh, Chris, if you can give people the elevator pitch for uh, the uh, the rundown of what Galactineers is. It's in early access, by the way, folks. Uh, just FYI. Uh, of course. Uh, well, uh, Galactineers is a genre mix of uh, open world sandbox game and real time strategy game. So it uh, combines the building aspects as you know them from Minecraft and real time strategy aspects like you know might know from Starcraft or similar games. And um, uh, you can use uh, different blocks and items and stuff uh, to shape the world to your imaginations. And uh, but the the fun part is uh, building ships. That what you see in the stream right now. Um, you can also design your own ships, and uh, whatever you build are your um, RTS units, which you can use to. Uh, build up your economy to improve building in the, in the world or do pve battle pvb battles or pve missions in cooperative mode and use your own custom ships so there are plenty of customizing options as well and yeah so that's the concept behind the game <clears throat> right and right now it's it's still pretty early so there isn't really much content it's more like building and some gathering right now if i cuz i've played about an hour or so of it and right now it seems mostly Mostly building, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, that's right. Uh, for the moment, we uh, have only one PVE mission uh, in the content. Um, uh, the whole uh, the whole engine is uh, completed, though, and the uh, API to create missions. So uh, you can play uh, a PVE mission, which is located in front of the starting base, but. Um, uh, there will be more, and uh, if you find extraterrestrial stations on the map, uh, there are these green question marks, uh, which are the um, uh, locations of the PVE missions to come. So you already know where they will be, and um, then play them later as soon as we developed and deployed them. Right, and um, yeah, because I, I saw those on the map as I was playing the game, but I didn't get to, to fiddle with them. Uh, so... Remind me, are the, the are there are there going to be randomly generated and st uh, like scripted missions, or is it all, uh, all is it all scripted? Uh, the sandbox world is uh, randomly generated, uh, but the uh, the missions are uh, uh, completely scripted. Yeah, you create them in the map editor and combine them with a PHP script, and uh, this will be a mission. Oh, I see. So people can. I'm sorry. I'm. Folks, please forgive me. I, it's very early here, and I'm very sleepy, so I'm forgetting things. Uh, but people uh, have the ability to create their own missions uh, for their game as well? Yes, of course. There's an API, uh, which is uh, already pretty well documented in our wiki. And uh, you can uh, just build the map in, in the editor and uh, put a PHP script with it. And uh, yeah. That's everything you need to do, uh, uh, besides creativity, obviously. <laughs> right. Now, um, 
I noticed the because uh, every every one of these games approaches uh, building ships a bit differently, and yeah. and you have a very block uh, centric. <clears throat> so you have a very block centric way of um, of building your ship. So how did you come to uh, the ship design process that uh, the, the process that you allowed people to build ships? Like how did you come to a block centric focus and has have you found that that has given you any advantages that maybe other games don't? Because I did like that, because mm-hmm. it's it's very block heavy. It's very easy to visualize your yeah, ship right. as you're putting it together. Yeah, as you could imagine, uh, I've been a Minecraft player uh, some years ago, ah. uh, <laughs> and um, so um, I like the blocky concept uh, of the game. And uh, it was the time where you did not have all those uh, server scripts, mods, and so on yet. And um, uh, there were people building uh, spaceships uh, on Minecraft maps, but uh, they obviously couldn't fly. So right, I rem- I remember it, someone built yeah. like a <laughs> someone built an Enterprise, and it was just sitting there. Like, why would you? Be- I mean, it's kind of cool, but it's just sitting there. Yeah, yeah. Right. exactly. Yeah, and I thought, uh, how would it be if you built such a ship and could actually use it? And so I um, uh, <laughs> I designed the ship, created the ship designer, and uh, it was pretty funny because um, on the on the one hand, it's it's limited due to the blocky style, obviously, but on the other hand, you can be so creative with only blocks, as Minecraft proves. And um, so this is a pretty cool concept, I think. And uh, yeah, because I, um, I mean, it was a little fiddly for me, but again, early access. And folks, I have to be honest about something. Uh, right off the bat, I'm well, kind of off the bat, I guess, <laughs> not right off. <laughs> But I'm I'm not the best with these building games. Uh, I I don't have a lot of patience for them. So uh, pl- I I when you see me play them like this in Space Engineers, I might get a bit impatient. So please don't let that color your opinion of the game itself, because this is not like it's not a re- it's less a reflection of the game and more a reflection of me. <laughs> so <laughs> so like the video that the video that uh, I'm streaming right now is a video I made uh, to use as a preview. But when I watched it, I'm like, oh, God, I'm being kind of a dick. You know, because I'm like, <laughs> eh, I don't want to build anything. So that's one of the reasons I haven't put it live, because it's like, wow, I'm kind of an asshole in this video. So uh, I wanted to just say to, to you, Chris, and to the folks listening right off the bat, it's not the game, it's me. Please don't. <laughs> I mean... Like I, I feel the same way about Empyrean and Space Engineer. It's like I don't want to build anything. I just want to fly shit. I just want to fly and kill shit. Um, so is there a way? Like, l- let me ask you a question, kind of about that. Have you run into that sort of thing with other players where it's like they don't have the patience to build. They just want stuff. And is there a way to appeal that? Like maybe give them a ship because uh, you do kind of give them a ship. But uh, like right off the bat, you give them. I think it's a battle cruiser. Um, but to well, do, okay. but to do. The, sorry, the game itself doesn't contain uh, any pre-built chips yet. But uh, the game is completely uh, connected to the Steam Workshop, so right. you can obviously browse uh, the community content, and there are already plenty of ships built for different levels one to five, uh, one to three. Uh, level five, four and five are not released yet, um, and you can see. Um, uh, uh, some people are really creative and uh, oh, just, yeah. sup- just subscribe it and uh, uh, they are available at your factory immediately so you can just oh uh, uh, yeah okay I think that's, that's... No problem at all. right but what I was thinking is like say I don't want to build anything I just want to tell this ship to go here and tell it. I just want to like a pure RTS mode is that possible as well a pure RTS mode um, well um the building mode is enabled uh, when you have a ship selected with a uh, build material on it. So without that, uh, you're in always you're always in RTS mode. Ah, okay. It's I, like you I move got... the ships around, and um, yeah, you you can uh, choose. Uh, sorry, I'm a bit distracted right now because I see uh, you're playing on an, on an old version of the game, which is uh, which has this bug of loading instances incorrectly. <laughs> So, oh uh, yeah, this you, you this launched, uh... you launched a PVE mission and uh, it actually did not launch, but uh, <laughs> the, the, the heads yeah. of display changed to. <laughs> to yeah, I, I recorded this video uh, right before we were about to do our last show, and uh, 
and uh, then uh, the, I just didn't put it live because I didn't like how it turned out. So I'm I'm definitely going to do another one. If you, if you say this is an older, buggier version, I won't even put this live. I'll just use this as a background for this show, and I'll make another video. Uh, yeah. That's that'll put but me it's already fixed. But uh, yeah, exactly. So I'll just like do build a... mode and so on right now because it's still in this. Uh intermediate state between instance and sandbox <laughs> oh i see so yeah. so are you gonna have because you say sandbox and you say instance so i i'm i'm imagining that the missions are more instanced and yet the uh, the rest of the world is more of a sandbox is that how yeah right well uh, uh, what you can see here in the video right now is the sandbox world uh, the the main base uh, of the sandbox world uh, which is uh, infinitely large like my, like minecraft it's um, a random map generator and um you'll find these uh, red and green question marks everywhere. Green are PVE locations and red ones are PVP locations. And at these locations, you can simply open up a lobby and uh, all uh, other players on the server can join and uh, get into an instance together um, to either play a PVP battle or the PVE mission located at that spot. <clears throat> So it might be a single player mission, like the tour tour mission, but it's uh, there will also be cooperative missions with up to four players. Oh, that's pretty awesome because I I I I used to not give a crap about co op, and now I I love co op. <laughs> <laughs> so that so that is pretty great. So so you said the maps are infinite because I I I did scroll around a couple and it just kept going and going and going like. What is like the biggest map you've ever seen like before the game has crashed? Like how big can these things get? Um uh in megabytes uh well <laughs> I, um, I can't, can't I can't really answer that but I think um the biggest radius I did for playing playtesting on the development servers like 2000 blocks around the the starting base usually you find all stuff you need like resources and the basic PvE missions in that radius or all the stations you need um um, but you could, <laughs> so uh, there's uh, no technical limits uh, for the map size. Well, except maybe a <laughs> number overflow in your memory. <laughs> right, and it, it's pretty impressive because the map. It's like I never really, I've not seen many space games with a map like this where it's got it's all these floating platforms, which yeah. I think is a really neat design choice. How did you come to this design choice where instead of maybe planets or space stations, you have these floating, like, blocky, kind of asteroidy platforms that, like, almost hold everything except, like, jump gates and things. Yeah, huh? it's n not just like that. There are also stations which are not located on asteroids. Uh, right, but, right, right. But I'm um, saying there are a lot of, there's a lot of that. I thought that was neat. There's a lot of these asteroid-based platforms. Yeah, you're right. Well, um, the idea was uh, to be able to build, uh, uh, to build stations and um, stations are, um, well, it's pretty difficult because uh, when you're in uh, empty space in the vacuum and you have no uh, no sense of up and down. Um, so uh, I chose that rather two-dimensional uh, style for the game. The the ships are always uh, have the same height, uh, and um, well. Um, it somehow evolved that we have asteroids under the most stations. Uh, I can't even uh, say why exactly, but uh, it looked good to have uh, uh, to have uh, the factories integrated in, uh, into the uh, into the asteroids, um, and to have some towers and other um, buildings uh, on the upside of it. Um, yeah, um, yeah. I think I think it gives it a unique look. Honestly, yes, and I, I really, I really do enjoy it. Now, now you said that you were a Minecraft player, and yes, that's that more Sorry to interrupt you. No, 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 that's fine. Uh, you said that you were a Minecraft player, and you saw people making like, yeah, I saw people making X wings and things in Minecraft, but they didn't go anywhere. So, is that what got the ball rolling on this game? Yes, definitely. Well, um, together with the idea, hey, how uh, would Minecraft in space be like? <laughs> so. Um, uh, this combined, obviously. So um, these two ideas. Uh, and and how, concept. how long have you been working on it? Um, it's a little bit over four years now. So it started uh, June 2012. Wow. Uh, and what engine is this running on? 
Um, it's uh, based on XNA. It's uh, by basically a DirectX wrapper for .NET and Microsoft. Oh, interesting. So, because yeah. so, you... so it's not a complete engine. Uh, you know, it's, it's rather a framework, and um, yeah, I developed all the stuff uh, on top of that, so like the chunking and the network and so on. Yeah, because you usually don't hear about .NET being used in gaming. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> so, <coughs> excuse me. So, using .NET, does that present any uh, challenges that you might not have if, say, you had you, you were using Unity? Or Unreal Tournament, Unreal Tournament. Oh my God, uh, Unreal. Well, I'm, I'm not uh, not a big fan of too much pre-made stuff because for me it uh, it narrows down creativity or uh, solving problems which you don't have. So if you uh, Unity, for example, it's extremely powerful, but it's uh, let's say it focuses on uh, ego perspective stuff obviously so if you want to have a, a, a two-dimensional strategy game in unity you have to do a lot of work so um it's uh like uh, yeah cracking the system <laughs> and, ah. um, so uh, for me uh, doing something from scratch is uh, more fun i know that that make that make, that makes uh that makes total sense uh because yeah this this gives you the total flexibility to uh, do whatever you want. And uh, so you've been working on four years. Is it just you or is it a few other people? Uh, well, uh, yeah, there, there are other people. Uh, well, I'm not a composer. I'm not a sound designer. I'm not a 3D sure. uh, obviously. Sure. So got, yeah, you'd, uh, I, could tell you, I could tell you didn't narrate <laughs> the tutorial videos, which I want to talk about in a second. But I can tell that's not you on the tutorial <laughs> videos. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, and, uh, it's uh, Native uh, American, actually. Oh, uh, okay. The girl who, who, uh, uh, who synchronized the tutorial videos. And um, yeah, so we, uh, we are a total of uh, seven guys. But if you uh, narrow it down to the pure writing code and development, it's just me. Wow. So I, I got to say, uh, going back to those tutorial videos for a second, I kind of like... Uh, how those were uh, spread out. It was, I'm going to admit it was a bit confusing trying to find some of them. It's like, where are the, where's the next one? Um, Cause there's like no arrow point to them or anything. It's just, I got to scroll the map and find them. Uh, and I, I'm impatient. So, but <laughs> beyond that, I really liked how you had these kind of interactive tutorial uh, videos within kind of the world. And it didn't really break the world uh, or, or the immersion because you kind of, you kind of framed it like, oh, we're watching this on a view screen of my ship, you know, and that's how it felt, which is really nice. So how did how did you come to design the tutorials the way you did? And uh, are there going to be more of them, for example? Like, uh, like I think there's, what, five or six right now? Eight. Uh, Eight. Okay, that's probably why I was confused, because I think I couldn't find one or two. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh but yeah, I really liked how they were kind of mixed into the world. How did the concept of like kind of making the tutorials a part of the world come about? Um, well, uh, it's, it was rather a question of uh, time and budget um, because uh, uh, coding a whole uh, tutorial with click this, uh, fight that, uh, and press this button, um, um, they take a lot of time to code. Um, and um, they are also pretty hard to um, to implement to this whole multiplayer stuff because um, technically um, right, the game, right. the client does not make any difference if you're playing on a server or single player. Uh, it behaves ac exactly the same. And um, when you create a map, um, well, ignoring the fact is that it's randomly generated, um, there might already have something happened on the map other players might have changed the world and the tutorial would just not work because uh, stations are not where they were supposed to be you know and um, right okay now that makes perfect yeah, sense so, yeah um so i thought tutorial videos would be nice but then it would be boring to uh <laughs> have a player joining the map and then uh smash a 30 minutes video into his face so i just uh, put them at the places where they are relevant uh, so you get the mining t uh, mining tower tutorial be uh, in front of the starting base mining towers um and uh 
they are all between 30 and 45 seconds so it's not too long so i guess this is a pretty good compromise uh, for the players to understand the economical stuff um, we are aware of the problem that it's a little bit, little bit hard to get started um, yes many people ask uh, hey what should i do first uh, what's recommended and how does all this stuff work at all and um, we are already approaching that problem so maybe with um, a sort of uh, introductional uh, video explaining uh, uh, or proposing a start to the game like uh, the first economic economical stuff harvesting blue crystal to get course and so that's the first thing you should do and um yeah we are thinking about how to integrate that to the game yeah I, it, yeah that's good i will admit you even after you sent me directions to do that i still had issues trying to figure <laughs> out i'm like i'm making the video I'm like the developer told me to do this thing and i'm not figuring <laughs> out how to do this thing Ah. <laughs> yeah, it's not, not very obvious because uh, the Minecraft players do not exactly know how it works uh, from the beginning because you the, the building mode is bound to a ship instead of you as a person and uh, the RTS players uh, don't know exactly what to do with their ships they have they know how to move it um, so I, I often see videos on the internet about the game uh, where people just fly around and uh, try to figure out uh, how the, the economy works or how to even build something. And uh, we know that's a problem and we are working on it. So, um, yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> no, no, that's great. Uh, I kind of want to ask about that sort of thing because early access we have found as we talk to developers and through our own experiences can really be a double-edged sword. Like, you have some really great examples of early access, like Starpoint Gemini and a few others. And then you have Space Base DF9 and a few others where people get really burned. Uh, how are you finding the early access process uh, in terms of developing your game and making it better? Is it really helpful? Is it frustrating? How, how is that going? Uh, I think it's a bit too early to uh, to answer that question yet okay. because uh, we are already uh, out of that uh, Steam novelty area, time area, and uh, so uh, we don't have a lot of new people c uh, joining in at the moment. Uh, so there's not so much feedback going on at the moment. Oh. Um, we are planning a big content upgrade uh, in, in the next few weeks uh, with uh, some promotions Ooh. going on and uh, so we hope uh, uh, it will bring some more community into the game and uh, also um, increase the amount of feedback we receive from the game. But the feedback we got is usually helpful. Well, besides the guys who just say, hey, I have Windows 10 and it's lagging. <laughs> it's not helpful. Uh, but, um, yeah, but, but other people post uh, crash logs or say, hey, that button, button does not work. Or nice. how would it be if this or that function uh, would be in the game? We already did some stuff proposed, actually. So if you are in the mining tower uh, context menu, for example, we have this uh, take everything to the ship button. Um, this was a proposal from uh, nice. the first two weeks. No, it, it eases up the, uh, the controls. I can, the controls. I can, I can only imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, you, you said you're out of the novelty period, because it's kind of interesting you mentioned that, because when you started this game four years ago, there yeah. were not really any other... <laughs> I mean, it's kind of interesting to see like how this genre... Because I started Space Game Junkie almost five years ago, and when I started it, there was like nothing coming out. And now... Holy crap. <laughs> there is so much coming out. It's wonderful, but at the same time, how how hard is it to gain visibility where not all, I mean Steam has its own visibility issues with, you know, games changing on the daily, you know, the deals yeah. and all that stuff. How uh how do you try and maintain visibility? Is it patches? Is it uh, is it is it sales? Like, like, what do you do to get visibility for your game on such a massive platform, especially now that there's more competition in this realm? 
You're right. Well, um, at the moment, uh, it's pretty silent. Uh, so uh, we want uh -huh. to wait uh, with a promotional compa uh, campaign for the big content upgrade to come out. Okay. Because uh, with big content upgrades, you're allowed to uh, put your game onto the start page of Steam for 24 hours, and that, that brings right. a lot of uh, a lot of um, visibility, obviously, and. Um, and if you combine that with, uh, for example, your Let's Play starting and uh, having uh, banner ads on websites and uh, and other stuff, posting on forums and so on, um, uh, all together um, will hopefully bring some some uh, some people to the game. Yeah, because the reviews right now are pretty positive on Steam. There aren't like a lot of them, like you said, but they're they're they are positive. So that that's a yeah, good that's start. Right. Well, we we struggled a bit a bit at the beginning because we had performance problems with uh, Windows 10 that brought us some negative reviews, and um, <laughs> most of these guys just post like, "Hey, I'm on Windows 10 and it does not run." Bam, thumbs up, thumbs down, and um, yeah, we fixed that problem, um, and um, since then we just got only one negative review which was about the tutorial videos and so um yeah you're right um the, the average is quite good bit, uh, the rating between positive and negative uh, reviews and um yeah I'm, I, I'm convinced with a bit more visibility it will be even better yeah i mean and, and the thing is the price is also de i mean uh, it's it's interesting to see the varied prices for games like this and ten dollars is a real it, I think it's a sweet spot for a lot of people because it, it, it shows that you're trying to show you a value, but you're also kind of in that impulse range, you know, it's like, Oh, it's only 10 bucks. Boom. You know? Yeah. Uh, so how yeah. did, how did you come to that kind of pricing? Cause I, I, it's weird. Like you'll see like these other games, like there's this like roguelike I want, I forget what it's called, but it's like $30. And I'm like, I'm I'm not gonna just shell out thirty dollars for for something, but ten, yeah, that's a lot easier. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, um, the main thoughts behind that, uh, you already said them. Um, we did not want to sell the game for uh, two or three dollars because uh, we spent four years of work into it, and it would just not uh, compare to the effort in the, of developing it. And. Um, yeah, well, uh, ten dollars is exactly the price where you would say, "Hey, okay, it's it, it's early access, it's not finished yet. Um, you get a game which is possibly partially broken and incomplete, um, but um, it's still a, a pretty complex game with uh, lots of features in it already." So uh, I end up somewhere at ten dollars <laughs> with that calculation. <clears throat> No, I mean that's a really good price because again, that's a that's a that's a that's a that's an impulse area for a lot of people. I know it is yeah. for me. So it's like ten bucks. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a risk on ten bucks. Now, um, another thing that you know Steam did with their refunds um, because now you can refund anything. Have you um, what would what like have you had any issues with refunds? Like, what's your opinion on the Steam refund system? Um, well, um, this happens. Uh, automatically in the background i can't actually see how many people are refunding the game oh. i just get the uh, i get ju just get statistics about the revenue and uh, the uh, the refunds are already integrated there so uh, oh. i can't tell too much about that <laughs> why wow, you, th you would think they'd want developers to know why people are refunding a game because yeah, that might they they uh they try to motivate people to post the review instead so uh and i had the huh. reviews in in which uh, people said hey i refunded the game because da 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 uh but uh, i have about the others i don't know the, okay that i gotta say i think that's a failing on steam's part because you would think if someone's going to refund a game you'd want to know why yeah, because that would that would help you make a better game, either this one or the next one, you know, so that that's really I'm, I'm honestly shocked to hear that, because from what I've understood about Steam's back end, you get a lot of information about how your game's doing, how it's selling. Yes. Yeah, but yeah. but to, to keep this more, I mean, less transparent just seems like an odd, odd design choice. 
because I mean, how are you gonna how are you gonna know what people aren't liking? I mean, besides reviews. I mean, I get that they want to encourage people to review, write reviews, but not everyone wants to write a review. You know, not everyone wants to sit there and write something. People just want to be like, oh, I didn't like it. Click, done. Yeah. You know, and they do ask you like why you're refunding it. There are reasons. You know, when you refund a game, it's like it's not fun. It didn't work. You know, blah blah blah. So, just giving you that information, I would think, would be helpful. Yeah, right. Yeah, you're right. Uh, oh, maybe I have not found the report yet. Uh, that might be another option. But I think I uh, I've been everywhere in that report page. Um, well, no. Um, I guess uh, Steam counts. Uh, it's just a guess. I uh, I think they um, just uh, only add that game to your revenue when that two weeks period of uh, of refunding possibility is is over. Oh uh, yeah. I'm not sure about that though. It's just a guess. No, it's fair. Um, no, that's that's fair. It's just. The more we talk to developers, the, the more we learn about the, the ups and downs of working with Steam as a platform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Well, uh, the major up is uh, as a small developer, you uh, no, uh, nearly have no alternatives. <laughs> <clears throat> That's true. And you did not, I'm rem if I remember correctly, you did not go through Greenlight. You, you, uh... I did, I did. Oh, you I did? did? Yeah, I did. Oh, I can't even remember. And usually, and well, I'm I'm also messed up on that because usually the the game page will say the green light community helped, you know, bring this to Steam. But your page, I don't think, says that. Okay. No, it doesn't. Uh, but that's fine. So, um, so I apologize uh, again. It's early, folks. I apologize. So how uh, how was the green light? I'm I'm may and and it's also possible I found out about you after the green light process. So maybe that's why it's not. Because it's so hard to keep track of all of this stuff now. Like, yeah. I'm just one guy, and there are these. There's Kickstarters. There's green lights. There's 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 Indiegogos. <laughs> it's like how do you keep? It's 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 getting impossible for me to keep track. And I try to help other people keep track, so it's like ah. Um, but how did you find the green light process? Um, it pre it went pretty well for us actually. So um, uh, I've uh, put the game into the green light process, and uh, even less than two weeks later, we were through it. So uh, we had a, that's a amazing. Quite, yeah, we had a pretty good, uh, pretty good ratio of votes, and uh, so um, yeah, I I can't complain. <laughs> All right, so let's talk. We haven't really been talking about the game itself, and I apologize for that. That's because my experience with it is a bit limited. So let, let's talk about some of the, the core designs of the, of the game. Basically, like we said, it's an RTS. Uh, now, is the primary goal uh, conquest of enemies? Is it map control? Uh, what would you say is the pri like territory control? What would be like the primary uh, goal of the game? Uh, as um. You you don't have a primary goal. It's a oh. sandbox game, so sure. Um, you, okay. You have the, those uh, those. Uh, you make your own. You make your time, own. Uh, yeah, you have those timed goals or uh, intermediate goals uh, due to the PVE missions. So uh, you have a challenge. But if you say I want to, uh, I want to complete this mission, I have to build the occurring ships which uh, are able to manage this mission, and um, this is the sort of challenge you can get. It might be um, uh, trading missions or uh, battle missions. It's all different, and so these are the challenges. But um, you know the PVE missions are all located inside that sandbox world. So um, the sandbox world is obviously infinite creativity. So just build and shape the world how you prefer to. <clears throat> you can unlock so, uh, uh, huge amounts of parts. So uh, this might be a goal as well. And uh, you get more options for your sandbox and economy stuff. Now, now I like that there. It's not just like bases, but there's like PVE missions, but there's also things like pirate nests, which I think I saw one once, yeah. <laughs> and that looked a bit scary. Uh, but it looked like I, I kind of liked how the world felt a bit lively, uh, because yeah. even in the early version I was playing, there were ships um, flying around, doing their own yeah. thing. 
So tell me about the AI. Like when you're in a sandbox, will there be other AI players doing the same thing you're doing? Basically, um, they are not doing the same as a, the same thing as you're doing, but um, there are four races in the in the game besides okay. the humans, and uh, two of them are hostile and uh, pirates, obviously, um, and uh, two of them are um, are friendly, and uh, they will uh, trade with you. So um, I've already seen in the stream um, you see you sometimes see merchants of uh, these races, yeah, 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 uh, coming out of the jump portals and. Uh, uh, you can use the docking bay structure to uh, define your um, supply and demand and uh, they will trade with you so you get the resources you need for research or to build or whatever now one thing i'm going to admit i struggled with a little bit was the ui because uh this is a sandbox there's a ton of stuff going on and, and the ui reflects that now uh i'm not saying it's bad it's just like my brain was like starting to <laughs> excuse me so um but it sounds like that's something that's being continuously worked on so how like how difficult is it to come up with an ai a ui excuse me that lets you because i mean you have a ui for building things right from your ship you have a ui for the factory you have a ui for all these different things like how much work does it take to go to to make a solid ui like and how do you go about that? Do you have like a whiteboard where you like plan it all out? Like, because there's just so much going on. You have to have a good UI to juggle all that. So how'd you come about the UI that's currently in the game? Oh uh, well, I think uh, I'm I'm doing doing it in the same approach. Like I would design uh, apps or or web pages or whatever I do in my job. Uh, I. I have a list of uh, of things which are uh, required to be to be displayed. What functions do uh, do there need to be? Um, uh, what uh, and how do I do that as easily as possible for the user? So um, so uh, the best thing always is to have uh, everything visible already. So uh, as few clicks as possible is always a good design choice. Yeah. Uh, well, it sometimes makes the ui uh, look pretty heavy that's why for example in the research lab you have a sort of tabs it has three sub menus um so th these are the basic thoughts you always do when you uh, design a context menu for a certain part of the game yeah i mean i really i really did like how um the ui was not only unobtrusive but seemed also very uh, uh, context driven, you know, which yes. which I really like, which I really like, because yeah, I'm a big fan of context driven UI. Yeah, there are some some static elements, obviously, like the minimap. Or of course, the yeah, of course. Um, then uh, when you select the ship, you uh, as you can see right now in the stream, you have that context menu for the ship at the right bottom. Exactly. Yeah. And then you can uh, right click. Uh, a building with a selected ship and you get that context menu for uh, for that building uh, popped, up, popped up as well and uh, you can drag items between these two menus or uh, use the, the the building menu only yeah I'll be, I'll be honest it remind me of uh, a, a UI for a game I really love called uh, SWAT uh, three or four have you ever played have you played either of those games SWAT yeah oh well that's pretty long time ago right but the, the, those are some of my favorite examples of contract context driven ui because like you'll right click a door and you have options for the door and you'll right you'll right click a corner and you have options for that corner you know so it kind of reminded me of that i mean yeah it's a long time ago but i i still play those honestly oh. regularly <laughs> oh god well you got the random enemy placement and you got the random enemy um disposition so even you're playing, even if you're playing on the same map, the enemies won't be in the same place and they won't be uh, in the same temperament. Yeah. So it, so it, yeah, yeah. But you have played those. Uh, yes, but it's a long time ago, and I uh, preferred the Rainbow Six games actually. But <laughs> oh, I was totally the opposite because I like the non, I like the the non-lethal focus oh, okay. of, of SWAT. I liked like you're trying to. Take them in. You're not trying to shoot them. You don't want to shoot them. You know, shooting is the last resort. You know, so you have to be like, yeah. you know, you have to be a lot more thoughtful, which I, I enjoy. I, I love the Rainbow Six games too, but SWAT for me, oh man. And the, and again, the UI, it's like 
Breach and clear that door. Red, go over there. Green, <laughs> blue, go over there. Uh, yeah, great context-driven UI. Guys, if you haven't played the SWAT games, you're kind of out of luck. No, you can get SWAT 3 on, uh, on GOG, and that one's still very playable. You can't get SWAT 4 anywhere, which is a goddamn crime. <laughs> Just a goddamn crime. Um, so you said you're a big Minecraft player. I'm going to go back to that. Were there any other games that helped influence Galactineers along the way? Uh, well, yes. Yeah, so the uh, If you uh, see the alien races and their structures, you will always find some... Uh, sort of uh, template for these somewhere else. <laughs> um, for example, the Karanum race is uh, obviously inspired by the Protoss of StarCraft. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the Harvest the Harvs race is, uh, has similarities with the Borg from Star Trek. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, obviously, well, you know the the genre mix of the game so uh influences from minecraft and starcraft are obvious <laughs> that's fair i mean if you're gonna if you're gonna get influence from something might as well go for pop good stuff like that uh now you said you had a big content update coming what is what's in that yeah um well uh it will unlock level four for for everything so it includes like a uh, hundred ship modules and uh, buildings for uh, for level four and um we try to add a new pve mission as well for that one so oh, nice. it will be the first real pve mission when you know the one in front of the starting base is uh, rather tutorial like and uh, you it's just a seek and destroy you destroy probes so with a uh, it's it's for the players starting their first mission they should see how how battling works how that instancing works right. uh, with the lobby system and so on um the mission we are trying to release uh, is called Rosina and, and uh, that's the name of the, the ship uh, which is in the focus of the story of the mission and um, it's a, 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 a trading ship of the human race and uh, you have uh, to escort it through a, a bunch of enemy ships and bases and bring it back to, uh, to your home base. Oh nice! <laughs> Yeah, it will be a cooperative mission for two players with a total of uh, six sheep, uh, six sheeps. Oh, so, nice! Uh, and and yeah. players control multiple ships. Yeah, everyone can uh, can join three ships into the mission, and uh, so you have a total of six plus the Rosinanto, which will go into uh, control of the first player who joins the mission. Now, I I I, I like uh, I'm sorry I like how you uh, have both single and multiplayer. Uh, in here, and you're going to have PvE and PvP. It just seems to offer just about something for everyone. Uh, how difficult has it been to incorporate multiplayer? Is that just through Steamworks, or is it through the engine? Like, how is that? How is that being? No, it's uh, it's uh, self-made, uh, self-made stuff. So um, it's it's not been that hard for the normal sandbox mode. Uh, well, it's a typical client-server system, which some with uh, with some uh, batch queues or command queues, and so uh, that works uh, that works out pretty well um, to keep everything synchronized. Um, it's a little bit tougher for the instancing because everything has to be faster. You can't work with a with a queue and wait for someone to have 50 blocks erased and then send it uh, to the other players as a batch right. uh, <laughs> that just does not work so uh, we still have a little a few synchronizing uh, issues with the instances but um, we're working on it so um, yeah that's a little bit tougher because uh, the handling is different that makes sense because you know you're trying to put specific players into a specific instance, so that that that, that makes sense. That be yeah. The instancing is not the problem; rather keeping oh. things uh, synchronized inside an instance. Oh. the real time stuff, you know, in in sandbox, it it's not that important to have. Uh, to have the information uh, ready for the other players inside a millisecond uh, during battle, where uh, it might be important if uh, the uh, enemy ship hits you first or you hit the enemy ship first. Uh, it's more important to have things synchronized uh, in real time. 
that, it's different, a different approach in programming, actually. That makes sense. Now, um, uh, something we haven't really talked about. When you said the the content update includes what a hundred new ship modules, I think you said. Yeah, close. Uh, to roughly, it. roughly. Yeah. Um, I uh, one thing we haven't talked about is research. Now, is that the way you gain new ship modules through doing research? And how does basically the whole research system work? Because I really didn't get to play um, with play. I didn't get to play with that. Uh, well, to answer answer the second question first, um, unlocking ship modules is mainly through loot in the PvE missions. Oh, okay. Uh, well, uh, so um, the research stuff basically um, is uh, related to the four races we have in the game. So you have research uh, for uh, for each of the four races. Um, you have to get blocks of that material into the research lab um, by... Uh, finding stations of the of these races and erase them or win their pve missions or um uh, trade with them if they are uh, if they are friendly and uh, you have to to get those resources and get them into the research lab um as soon as you have uh, everything together you will um unlock this races aspect i call it called it the aspects and um for example, the Karanum aspect, if you uh, finish researching that one, you, it will unlock all Karanum material in the ship designer. So new blocks, basically. Oh, yeah. and, so and what do, the, oh, I'm sorry, what do those new blocks give you access to? Like better weapons, better equipment? Like what do those new blocks give you access to? Um, b uh, blocks are, are the blocks, really, it's those, uh, the, the cubes. Um, the um, they have uh, d different uh, properties than other materials. So iron is heavy. The Karana material is yellow and uh, pretty light but solid. Right. And um, the, they are mainly visual, but also uh, have influence on the statistics of your of your ship. So you can build faster ships with Karana material, for example. With the Margrax material, you can build more solid ships. And um, so uh, uh, everything you do in the ship designer uh, influences the statistics of the ships, not just the number of engines you put, oh. but also the material of the engines and the blocks you use has influence on the statistics of the ship. Really? Oh, I yes. didn't know that. So like you're not you're not just talking about like what's on the ship, but you're talking about like fit like actual physics, like weight and all that stuff too. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. I didn't even notice that. Very well done. <laughs> Very so well you, uh, with with research you only unlock the uh, these uh, race specific blocks and oh, um, okay. but the the uh, most uh, essential part of the research is that as soon as you unlocked all four aspects of one stage you bring the whole world to the next level so oh. the world, uh, you see the the uh, the small UI part at the top right of the screen, which displays a one. That's the world level. So oh. um, uh, you, as soon as you researched all four alien aspects, uh, the world will switch to level two, and this allows you to build level two structures. Uh, like level two foundry, level two docking bay, level two jump portals, and so on. And ma well, the main structure is the level two factory, obviously, which will give you access to a bigger ship designer for to build level two ships. Oh, which that's has right. more, co more cores, different core types than the three basic ones, uh, more modules, and so on. All right. So, so you said you um, you're having a. Um... A big content update. What are some of the other big updates? Like, what's the roadmap you have planned up to release? Like, what are some of the things you have planned up to 1.0? What are some of the other things you have planned on the on the on the road to 1.0? Yeah, well, uh, obviously there are level four and five to come. Level five will be the final stage, um, and we uh, want to have all PVE missions implemented. Well, that's obvious. Um, for the moment, we have like eight or nine different uh, extraterrestrial stations in the game, and all of them have a green question mark. So the goal would be to uh, have a mission for all of these already existing question marks. Um, plus maybe community content. I don't know how many people are willing to script their own missions and add them to the workshop. Uh, we uh, are willing to integrate the best of these to the game as well. Um, 
so feel free dear viewer <laughs> um, so um yeah that these are the main parts plus some uh tutorial stuff uh, we already talked about that like uh, the uh, getting started tutorial but also um some more some stuff which is not in the starting base like a research lab the observatory and uh, other structures like or the automation lab which allows to build transmitter systems to uh, automatically transport uh, items from a factory to uh, to storage that's already in the game but it has no tutorial videos yet so um yeah so uh, these are the three main parts which are on the roadmap yeah yeah, because folks, seriously, if you're into building ships and things like that and, and harvesting and mining, this is seriously the game for you. I'm not even kidding. Like, like, because there's just all of that in here. And I'm looking at some of the stuff on the workshop, and I think it's funny how, like, some people have made, like, variations of the ships that came in the game. But there's also someone made a, a GTF Apollo from Free Space. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, um, uh, I was already stunned when I released the first playable alpha version in December 2012, what people were able to build with just two engines, two blocks and two weapons <laughs> on a five by seven grid. So it, I was already stunned about the creativity. So uh, now we imagine what's possible with a level five factory with a like 21 by 35 grid and like 300 400 different module types uh, i think people can build complete uh, star trek enterprises or x-wings or whatever in the game blocky of course <laughs> yeah there there's some, there's some bigger ships here i love that someone has made some ships from conquest frontier wars yeah. which is which is pretty much one of my favorite rts games like period if you guys haven't played that one, it's on GOG. It's so good. Um, but there's like four ships from Conquest in here, which just makes me giddy. <laughs> it really it really does, because I'm like, oh my god, Conquest, someone else played that besides me. Yay! Yeah, they are pretty neat ships in the workshop already. I already also uploaded some to, just to get people the impression what's possible with the ship designer well because most people just build a few iron blocks and put some engines on it but you can also build all those extraterrestrial ships i mean if you see morgrax's carrier which is in the top list of the of the workshop right now at the moment um it's also built on the ship designers nothing nothing special i did there in terms of coding so yeah i was looking at that and i was also looking at uh the rose rosenante which is also a really another really nifty looking ship. Yeah, that's the quest ship for the mission. Actually, I talked about. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, that's a really neat looking one, you guys. Yeah, it's and, a level level three human ship. Interesting. This is still all made with blocks, and yet it's such a neat looking design. It's still all made with blocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there, uh, there are really a lot of uh, decorative modules. Uh, so we have like uh, approximately 100 modules uh, per level. So uh, oh. the game goes to level three at the moment, as you know, level four will be in the content upgrade. So uh -huh. uh, if you unlock everything, you have like 300 uh, modules uh, yeah, for, for the ship designer. Dear Lord. Um, so I got to wrap up soon because I actually have to go to work. But let's... Uh... I tr we try and ask this of our, our guests, but besides the game y you're making, are you playing anything else right now that you'd like to share with folks? Oh, I have uh, don't have so much time at the moment to play. No, that's that's a very <laughs> common answer. That's a very common answer. <laughs> and a lot, um, we get that one a lot. Don't even worry about it. You know? uh, <laughs> if I have the time, I uh, like games like uh, Forza Horizon, City Skylines, oh. uh, or Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raiders, things like that. I gotta say, I am super excited that Forza is finally coming to Windows, because I've been wanting to play that for a really long time. Yeah, well, but that's a typical Xbox couch game for me, to be honest. <laughs> oh no, I, I love couch games like that. Like, I yeah. play, um, I have a PS3, so when I feel like playing a couch game on the PS3, for me it's uh, Midnight Club Los Angeles. Yeah, ah, yo, uh, oh. Yeah. 
which pretty would, old as well. But well, yeah, but I, I very good, yeah. oh yeah, because I li again I live in Los Angeles, so it's like oh I know that place. <laughs> so it, it kind of hits a bunch of notes for me. But yeah, I've I've been I've been watching all these Xbox folks play Forza for years. I'm like I want to play Forza, but I don't want to buy another thing. <laughs> uh, so even though I'm not on Windows 10 yet, I probably eventually <clears throat> will be. So I'm very excited that Forza is finally coming to PC because that's like leaving money on the table by not bringing a popular franchise like that to another platform. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I get you, I get that you want to sell the hardware, but sure. Give, be exclusive for a little while and then come to another platform where you can get more fans. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. So I've been trying to play, I've been wanting to play Forza for a while. Now let me ask you one last thing kind of related to that. Have you ever played the crew? The crew? Uh, well, it was a birthday present, <laughs> but ah. I did not install it yet. Oh, you it's know, it's great. Factor. Sure, yeah. but when you get a chance, you should. It's really great. Yeah. It's really it's a great road trip game because the whole country, it's whole it's all of America, kind of abstracted. But it's kind of like if you play if you've played European Truck Simulator, it's kind of uh, the crew. I'm sorry, I, I mix it up with uh, with uh, Project Cars. No, sorry, I cr the crew. I played the crew. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, I haven't played yeah. Project Cars, but I want to. I, apparently that one's pretty good, too, but I love the crew. The crew is so much fun. Yeah, I like that gang style you have to Yeah. Use. Yeah, yeah, it's a great story, real fun. Um, so, yeah, let's wrap this up. Folks, the game is Galactineers, and it's on Steam right now for 10 bucks. It is currently in early access. As we talk, it's about to have a big uh, content update in a few weeks, which will probably coincide... Uh, did you say it's going to coincide with the promotion? Is that going to include like a sale? Uh, yeah, uh, at least a discount. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> a discount, like not like not like a, you know like a big one, sure. But I mean, you're still in early access; it's still relatively new. But so yeah, in a few weeks, as we record this, uh, if you're listening currently, uh, there's going to be a big content update, and there's going to be a uh, a discount and some promotion stuff coming up. So keep an eye out for that on Steam. Uh, but currently it is nine ninety nine, which for all the content you get, even in this early access stage, you get the, you get co op, uh, you get multiplayer, uh, which kind of goes with co op. Uh, you can make missions, you can build all sorts of stuff. There's just a lot going on here, and if you're into building games, you know where you build ships and you build factories and stuff. You need this one in your toolbox. This is one you definitely need <clears throat> in your toolbox because there's just a lot going on here, and it really. More than the other games, I think it really does hit that Minecraft in space vibe more than maybe some of the other games. And I like I like the other games too, but this one really hits that vibe, that my, Minecraft in space vibe, which is apparently is kind of what you were going for, so it sounds like it was successful. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Chris, I want to thank you for not only taking the time to talk with me, but also, again, being flexible and having to reschedule um, You're welcome. Thanks for uh, making it possible for me to be on the show. Oh, we really appreciate it. So, <laughs> folks, uh, just a couple of programming notes real quick before. Oh, uh, sorry. Where can people find you online, Chris? Besides Steam, clearly, like on Twitter. Uh, and Twitter and YouTube. Uh, you find uh, my nickname, Linzo de T, on, uh, in the description probably uh, as soon as Brian <laughs> put it in there. And, uh, well, it's uh, on the Steam shop uh, store page as well. So. With that nickname, just find me on Twitter and YouTube. Got it. Uh, so, folks, just a couple of programming notes real quick. Next week, we're welcoming back, as I was saying to uh, Chris earlier, welcome back. Oh, another Chris. Uh, <laughs> uh, four t now now four-time guest, guest Chris Stockman, who uh, you, you folks may remember from um, Battle of Soul and uh, Fleets of Soul. He worked on uh, Star Trek Elite Force 2. Uh, way back in the day and says he has some very interesting stories about that. So uh, we're going to kind of bring it down to earth a little bit and talk about that game next week with him. Uh, we're also going to do some multiplayer with that on Thursday. And finally, Space Game Junkie turns five in a couple of weeks, you guys. It turns five on August 15th. So on that day, I'm going to take the day off from work. I'm going to do a bunch of streaming. We're going to have contests. Uh, like trivia contests, and we're going to have Name That Tune, and we're going to, you know, stuff like that. So we're going to have some contests, we're going to have some streaming stuff, we're going to try and get a roundtable of fans and whatnot going. 
But there's also a contest going right now at SpaceGameJunkie.com where if you help me w get 5,000 subscribers uh, up to that, not only will you get a prize, uh, but the... Um, but the person who is the 5,000th subscriber will also get a prize. So, uh, so yeah, go to SpaceGameJunkie.com and look for that contest. And, uh, again, thank you for listening and watching and being supportive of this site because it's just been joyful. Just joyful. Talking about all these great space games. And, Chris, thank you so much for taking the time to join us again. Uh, You're welcome. And we will definitely have you back on in like six months or so when there's a lot more content and more stuff to talk about. We can definitely have you back. No question. Because uh, yeah, we, lo we love course. repeat guests. That's always a good time. So, um, so yeah. So, folks, thank you for listening and watching. And uh, we will see you next week with another Chris. Have a good one, folks. Bye-bye.